This is the second in a three-part review of the Sendy Peacock. In the last video, we discussed the build, comfort, and sound of the Peacock. In this video, we will talk about the comparisons. Let's first set some ground rules. First, I am not a proponent of buying uber expensive gear. Having owned and listened to lots of products that cost over $500 and many products that cost well over $1,000, I can say without any hesitation that price is a terrible indicator of sound quality, build, features, and customer service. You rarely get what you paid for. In the past, I have compared products throughout the price range, and I try to compare to cheaper alternatives whenever possible. But when we talk about headphones that cost $1,000 or more, I have to take a different approach. I think most people understand that a $1,000 headphone does not sound twice as good as a $500 headphone, or that a $4,000 headphone has eight times better performance in soundstage, detail, resolution, clarity, placement than a comparable $500 headphone. Clearly, companies and reviewers want you to believe this is the case, but it's not true. A simple, consistent, truthful A-B test will show this. So, when we talk about headphones in this price category, over $1,000, we need to figure out why anyone would ever buy something that's expensive when you can get nearly the same performance from far cheaper products. The answer, in my opinion, is because people just want to have nice things. I can understand and relate to that. Consequently, this video is not about finding a cheaper alternative to the Peacock or the LCD3 or any of the uber expensive hyped products. Instead, we're going to do something a little different we are going to compare the Peacock to its price category. Let's put these companies head to head, their best against each other. Let's see what real differences there actually are. Enough of the craziness surrounding these pricey headphones. Enough of the pointless bickering about the Peacock being an LCD X killer or the Empyrean being more dynamically impressive. We're getting into the real A-B test. In this video, I will compare the Peacock to the following headphones. Get ready for this. The Odyssey LCD X, LCD 3, LCD 4Z, Maze Empyrean, Focal Utopia, Focal Stelia, Focal Clear, Sennheiser HD 800S, Sony MDR Z1R, Dan Clark Ether C Flow 1.1, Dan Clark Ether 2, ZMF Auteur, and my latest acquisitions, the Head Audio Headphone Revision 2, and the Maze Lyric. I will compare all of these in a true A-B test using a passive switch. That switch will have been connected to my RME ADI-2 DAC, my iFi Pro ICANN and Pro IDSD stack, and my MyTech Brooklyn DAC Plus. Because we have a lot of comparisons to do, I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of the sound signatures. We will not talk about each song I listen to, for example. You will, however, get a summary of my findings for the bass, mids, treble, detail, and soundstage. At the end, I will try to summarize the sound signatures of all of these headphones. With all of this out of the way, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and try to think about what I'm actually trying to say. The LCD X has ever so slightly greater sub bass rendition. It's not a material difference, perhaps only by a few decibels. Transients, I think, is about the same. Clarity and separation of sub bass from mid bass is more obvious on the Peacock. Mid bass impact is slightly harder on the LCD X. The difference, again, was by minimal degrees. The mids are not the same. The LCD X accentuates both vocal grain and sibilance. The sibilance is a noticeable departure from the Peacock's more neutral rendition in comparison. Vocals appear closer to the ears on the LCD X. Separation of mid centric elements is more obvious on the Peacock. The Peacock was a little clearer, although both headphones typically presented voices of multiple vocalists. Unlike with the bass response, the differences in the mids was immediately obvious upon an A-B test. The treble response is also not the same. Both headphones have treble accentuation, but the Peacock is noticeably closer to neutral. The LCD X has a more prominent treble push, particularly in the upper treble region. Switching back and forth, it was quite obvious that the LCD X made brass and horn seem more prominent in a mix, particularly when the higher notes were being played. Clarity in the treble region is slightly more apparent on the LCD X. Detail rendition is similar. The Peacock overall is clearer, at least in the bass and mids. The LCD X appears to have a bit more clarity in the treble, 
Separation of elements in a mix is typically more obvious on the Peacock by marginal accounts. Both headphones present obvious details, but nuanced details are equally difficult to hear. So, while you will hear twangs of guitar strings, multiple vocalists, sharp intakes of breaths on both headphones, neither headphone is particularly adept at parsing, separating, and dissecting layered details. In other words, it's unlikely you will hear every single nuance, every little imperfection, the subtle, obscure details with either the Peacock or the LCD-X. As for my quantitative test, both headphones present eight footsteps when I listened to the song New Light by Kazuki. Soundstage is similar, but the Peacock has a bit more of it. The Peacock sounds a little bit wider. On my scale, I use the HD6XX and the LCD-1 as the average performers. I would say that both the Peacock and the LCD-X have above average soundstage, though neither is quite as wide as the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, which is also in the above average category. Overall sound signature of these headphones is noticeably different. The Peacock has a closer to neutral presentation. The LCD-X has a warmer, darker, and more vocal-centric signature. It is, in my view, more of a balanced sounding headphone than a neutral one. The LCD-X's vocal push is patently obvious, as are its sibilance and treble emphases. Those who claim that the Peacock is an LCD-X killer probably have little experience doing actual A-B tests. It's unfair to say that the Peacock kills the LCD-X when the two headphones do different things. They don't sound alike. More than that, their building comfort are different. The Peacock is lighter and has a looser clamp compared to the LCD-X. My LCD-3 is about two years old. It came with the original leather headband, the one with at least some padding. I do not know if Odyssey has purposely made any significant changes to the signature since this particular revision of the LCD-3. My LCD-3 has about the same amount of sub bass as the Peacock. However, I think going back and forth that the Peacock might have a few decibels greater emphasis. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is considerably more obvious on the Peacock. Clarity in this region is also more apparent on the Peacock. Mid bass impact is about the same, however. The mids were surprisingly similar, but not the same. Unlike with the LCD-X, the LCD-3 does not have a prominent vocal push. Vocal grain and sibilance appear to be quite similar between the LCD-3 and the Peacock. Both are close to neutral. Separation of mid-centric elements is more obvious on the Peacock. Vocals seem a little closer to the ears on the LCD-3. Trouble response is similar between the Peacock and the LCD-3, but I think there's a slight difference upon an A-B test. The Peacock seems to have a tiny bit more treble energy in the mid to upper treble region compared to the LCD-3. Separation of treble instruments is considerably greater on the Peacock, I think. Placement is also a little bit more obvious on the Peacock. Detail is easier to perceive on the Peacock. The LCD-3 tends to muffle some of the more subtle details in a mix. Obvious details such as multiple vocalists, twangs of guitar strings, sharp intakes of breaths, and simple instrument compositions are quite apparent on both headphones. But when tracks become complex, using layered details or digital effects, the Peacock tends to be a bit clearer. On my quantitative test, the LCD-3 presented 7 footsteps to the Peacock's 8. While this result is rather close, the clarity with which I heard the footsteps was markedly different. The LCD-3 muffled many of the footsteps, requiring me to concentrate even harder for them. As for soundstage, the Peacock is slightly wider than the LCD-3. The HD6XX and the LCD-1 are my average performers, and both the Peacock and the LCD-3 clearly pass that hurdle. So the LCD-3 is above average in soundstage, but not quite as wide as the Peacock, the LCD-X, or the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. The LCD-3's overall sound signature is closer to neutral than the signature of the LCD-X. I think the differences between the LCD-3 and the Peacock are not necessarily significant, and at least not as patently obvious as those between the LCD-X and the Peacock. Indeed, I am comfortable saying that the LCD-3 and Peacock have tuning that falls within the neutral category. But the headphones do not sound identical. The Peacock has more clarity and separation. The LCD-3 is noticeably more intimate. The LCD-4Z and Peacock appear to have very similar bass response. Transients, clarity, and separation in this region are very hard to distinguish. If I had to give an edge, I would give it to the LCD-4Z. I think this headphone does have marginally greater separation of sub-bass from mid-bass compared to the Peacock. Mid-bass impact is also quite close, but the LCD-4Z has slightly harder drum hits. The mid's response is obviously different. 
The LCD-4Z has a greater emphasis in vocal grain and sibilance. The peacock is closer to neutral in this regard. Separation of mid-centric elements is clearly more apparent on the LCD-4Z. Vocals stand out from instruments more on the LCD-4Z than on the peacock. Treble is noticeably different. The LCD-4Z has closer to neutral rendition than the peacock. The peacock has a slight emphasis in mid to upper treble in comparison. Clarity in the treble is more obvious on the LCD-4Z. Separation of treble instruments is also more apparent on the 4Z. The LCD-4Z appears to provide a bit more detail and clarity than the peacock. There's more separation among all elements in the mix on the 4Z, though the difference is not necessarily night and day. There's more of what some might call air on the LCD-4Z. Both headphones will easily provide obvious details, but I think that the 4Z will render the more subtle ones more often. On my detail test, the LCD-4Z provided 10 clear footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. As for soundstage, the LCD-4Z is a little wider than the Peacock. Both headphones are above average in this category, that is, they are wider in soundstage than the LCD-1 and the HD6XX. The LCD-4Z is as wide as the Hi-Fi Manzundara. The overall sound signature of these headphones leans towards neutral. The grand scheme is that the 4Z is closer to that mark than the Peacock, but the headphones are not night and day apart in sound signature. The LCD-4Z sibilance and vocal grain emphasis is noticeably more than the Peacock's, but it's not nearly as pushy as when I compare the LCD-X to the Peacock. The 4Z's treble is closer to neutral than the Peacock's, but I think by marginal accounts. Both headphones are in the neutral category if you ask me. What is immediately different, however, is that the 4Z has more separation, clarity, and placement than the Peacock. In an A-B test, these differences are apparent. The Empyrean and Peacock seem to have about the same amount of sub-bass rendition. The Empyrean has slightly faster transients and marginally greater separation of sub-bass from mid-bass. Clarity in this region is nearly the same, but the Empyrean seems to be just a little bit clearer. Mid-bass impact is very hard to distinguish between these headphones. The mids are quite different in this comparison. The Peacock has noticeably closer to neutral rendition. It does not emphasize vocal grain or sibilance nearly as much as the Empyrean. The Empyrean's sibilance emphasis is similar to that of the LCD-X. Separation of mid-centric elements is nearly identical on the Peacock and the Empyrean. The Empyrean separates vocals from instruments marginally more obviously, I think, however. Trouble response is similar. However, it appears that the Empyrean has a little more treble emphasis, particularly in the upper treble region. The peacock is closer to neutral in this regard. Clarity is marginally greater on the Empyrean, and separation and placement of treble instruments is practically the same. Detail retrieval is very similar between these headphones. The Empyrean never revealed more details than the peacock. The Empyrean, although a little clearer overall, could not render minute, nuanced details. Obvious details are present on both headphones, and neither headphone is particularly able to parse or dissect subtle, super subtle details. On my detail test, the Empyrean rendered 9 clear footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. As for soundstage, both headphones have wider soundstage than the LCD-1 and the HD6XX. The Empyrean has slightly wider soundstage than the Peacock, but not quite as wide as the Hi-Fi Mansundara. The Empyrean sound signature is not neutral. It focuses on mids, particularly vocals. In this regard, it is similar to the LCD-X. In my view, the Empyrean is more of a balanced sounding headphone, whilst the Peacock is closer to neutral. The Utopia has a noticeable sub-bass roll-off compared to the Peacock. Transience is a little faster on the Utopia. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is greater on the Utopia. Mid-bass impact is harder on the Peacock. The Utopia is clearer in the bass region. The mids are also differently presented. The Utopia accentuates vocal grain and sibilance noticeably more than the Peacock. In comparison, the Peacock is closer to neutral. Separation of mid-centric instruments is a little clearer on the Utopia. Vocals are more prominent, more separated from instruments on the Utopia. The Utopia presents treble a little differently from the Peacock. The Utopia seems to have fairly neutral rendition in the low to mid treble region, but there's an obvious emphasis in the upper treble. The Peacock, in comparison, is closer to neutral. It too has a treble push, but it is not quite as emphatic as that of the Utopia.
The Utopia has greater separation of treble instruments and more obvious placement. The Utopia appears to provide greater detail retrieval than the Peacock. While both headphones will easily render obvious details, the Utopia will also provide them with more clarity. The Utopia also has the ability to recreate the more subtle, nuanced details. Multiple vocalists, twangs of guitar strings, sharp intakes of brass, creaking of wood, shifting of cellos, layered electronic instruments are more easily audible on the Utopia. On my detail test using the song New Light, the Utopia provided 10 to 11 clear, obvious details. The Peacock, in comparison, renders 8. The Utopia's overall sound signature is not neutral. It, like others in this comparison, emphasized vocal and treble. The Utopia has a sibilance push that is rather similar to that of the LCD X and the Maze the Empyrean. However, the Utopia has greater separation among elements in a mix, which translates to more obvious placement of instruments and vocals. The Utopia, I think, is a balanced sounding headphone. The Peacock is closer to neutral, and in comparison, is also a warmer sounding headphone than the Utopia. The Stelia has noticeably greater emphasis in bass than the Peacock. Both sub bass and mid bass are elevated compared to the Peacock. Separation here is greater, more obvious, on the Peacock. Clarity is also more apparent on the Peacock. Transience is faster on the Peacock. Mid bass impact is considerably harder on the Stelia. The bits are different between these headphones. The Stelia has a greater emphasis in both vocal grain and sibilance. The Peacock is closer to neutral. Vocals are placed similarly in the mix, however. In other words, the Stelia and Peacock keep vocals about one to two steps ahead of instruments. Separation and clarity in this region is a little bit more obvious on the Peacock. The treble rendition is slightly different. The Stelia is actually closer to neutral in this regard than the Peacock. The Peacock has a slight emphasis in the mid to upper treble region. The Stelia in comparison seems to be neutral throughout the treble region. Separation of treble instruments along with clarity is greater on the Peacock. Placement of instruments is about the same. Detail retrieval is similar between these headphones. However, the Peacock is a little clearer overall. Both headphones will present obvious details and neither will clearly render the more subtle, nuanced ones in a mix. Multiple vocalists, twangs of guitar strings, streaking of wood, the nasally signatures of brass instruments, these are all easily audible on both headphones. My quantitative detail test shows that the Stelia renders 7 footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. Both headphones have wider soundstage than the HD6XX and the LCD-1, but the Peacock is marginally wider than the Stelia. The Stelia's overall sound signature is balanced. It has a greater bass emphasis than the Peacock. In fact, I think the Stelia's emphasis in bass is above neutral. Moreover, the Stelia's vocal grain and sibilance is not neutral. However, the Stelia's treble rendition is neutral, or at least more neutral than the Peacock's. The Stelia is not as clear or as detailed as the Peacock, but the differences are not significant, I think. The Clear has a sub bass roll off that is similar to the Peacock. Transience is almost as fast on the Peacock as it is on the Clear. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is more obvious on the Clear. Clarity in this region is patently more apparent on, well, the Clear. Mid bass impact is a little bit harder on the Peacock. The Clear's mids rendition is a bit different from the Peacock's. Both headphones accentuate sibilance a little. The Clear has a marginally greater one than the Peacock, however. Vocal grain seems to be neutral on both headphones. Vocals appear closer to the ears on the Peacock. The Clear separates mid-centric elements more obviously. Trouble is very similar in rendition. Both headphones have what appears to be close to neutral response here. However, both also have a minor accentuation in the upper treble region. The Clear also has more separation and clarity in this region. The Clear has greater placement. Detail retrieval is significantly greater on the Clear. Indeed, the Clear, living up to its namesake, provides noticeably greater separation among all elements. This is a night and day difference, if nothing else. The Clear has the capacity to render obvious, subtle, and nuanced details. The Peacock renders obvious details and sometimes the more subtle ones, but there is no doubt that the Clear always renders more and clearer details than the Peacock. In my detail test using the song New Light, the Clear rendered 18 clear footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. The Clear and Peacock have wider soundstage than the HD6XX and the LCD-1. The Clear has wider soundstage than the Peacock and as much as the Hi-Fi Mansundara. The Focal Clear's overall sound signature is not neutral but leans towards analytical.
It has a sub-base roll-off but fairly neutral mids in treble. The clear's principal achievement is its clarity, separation, detail, and placement. The peacock, in comparison, always makes recording sound warmer, more intimate than the clear. It should come as no surprise that the HD800S has a significant bass roll-off. Sub-bass is markedly different in this regard. The peacock is much more neutral in bass than the 800S. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is considerably more obvious on the 800S. Bass detail is greater on the 800S. Mid-bass slam is harder on the peacock. The mids frequency is also quite different. The peacock has a marginal emphasis in vocal sibilance. Vocals are generally one to two steps ahead of instruments. The 800S emphasizes both vocal grain and sibilance. The sibilance push on the 800S is a little bit more than what I hear on the peacock. The 800S separates all mid-centric elements more obviously than the peacock. The 800S has more clarity and detail in the mids region. The 800S and Peacock both emphasize treble, starting around the mid or upper treble area, depending on which headphone you look at. The 800S has a greater emphasis, but one that is not quite harsh or piercing. Separation, detail, clarity, and placement among treble instruments is considerably greater on the 800S. The Peacock presents all elements closer to the ears, while the 800S keeps them further away. There is no doubt that the 800S has vastly greater detail and resolution to provide than the Peacock. Obvious, subtle, and nuanced details are easily audible on the 800S. The Peacock, on the other hand, will typically provide obvious details and sometimes the more subtle ones. Layered details are patently clear on the 800S, but are very hard to hear on the Peacock. On my detail test, the 800S presents 22 footsteps. The Peacock provides 8. The 800S has the widest soundstage of any headphone I have ever heard. It is the gold standard. The Peacock soundstage is wider than that of the HD6XX and the LCD-1, but not quite as wide as the Hi-Fi Men's Sundara. Moreover, the 800S has verticality, depth, and width, and if your recording was not made in mono and mixed with various microphone placements, then the 800S will render a 3D effect with sounds all around you. The Peacock can't do that. The HD800S has an analytical sound signature. While it is not bass anemic, it is definitely not a headphone for those who listen to songs where bass is prevalent. The 800S can parse, dissect details. If there is a detail in a recording, this headphone would probably find it. The Peacock, on the other hand, is a fairly neutral headphone. Clearly, it was not designed for analytical work. The MDR Z1R has greater bass emphasis than the Peacock. Sub bass is closer to neutral on the Z1R, and appears to be just marginally above neutral, I think. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is more obvious on the Peacock. Clarity in the bass region is greater on the Peacock. Mid bass impact is a little harder on the Z1R. The mids are not similar in a few respects. The Z1R emphasizes vocal sibilance considerably more than the Peacock. In this regard, the Peacock is noticeably closer to neutral. The Z1R also has a bit more vocal grain push than the Peacock. All mid-centric elements are closer to the ears on the Z1R. Separation and clarity of instruments and vocals is more obvious on the Peacock. Both headphones present vocals about one to two steps ahead of instruments. Both of these headphones emphasize treble. The Peacock has a marginal push in the upper treble region, or thereabouts. The Z1R has a noticeably greater push in the upper treble region in comparison. Brass and horns have more energy on the Z1R than the Peacock. Separation and clarity in this region is a little bit more obvious on the Peacock. Neither headphone excels at detail retrieval. Both headphones provide obvious details, but the Peacock is typically clearer overall. The Peacock never presented obvious details that the Z1R missed, but what it did render was usually a little clearer and more separation from other elements in the mix. Multiple vocalists, pops and sizzles, sharp and takes of breaths, twangs of guitar strings, creaking of wood, all of these apparent details were recreated on the Z1R and the Peacock. The Peacock merely presented them a little bit more clearly. On my quantitative test, the Z1R presented 7 clear footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. As for soundstage, the Z1R has about the same amount of soundstage as the HD6XX and the LCD-1. The Peacock has wider soundstage than the Z1R, but not quite as wide as the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. The Z1R's overall signature is balanced tuning. It is not a bassy headphone, but it is a darker sounding one. It is intimate. All elements in a mix are closer to the ears than what you'd hear on the Peacock. Vocals are obvious in a track, never seemingly overwhelmed by the bass or treble. 
but the Z1R does not separate elements and does not present an abundance of detail. It has a close to neutral bass response, forward mids with sibilant vocals and an upper treble emphasis. The Peacock in contrast is noticeably closer to neutral. My Ether Seaflow 1.1 has the factory white tuning pads still installed. I use this configuration to test this headphone. The Ether Seaflow 1.1 has a quite noticeable bass roll-off. This headphone, out of all that we have compared thus far, has the least amount of sub-bass and the fastest transients. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is marginally greater on the Ether C. Bass clarity, however, is similar. Mid-bass impact is harder on the Peacock. The mids are not too dissimilar. Both the Ether C and the Peacock marginally emphasize vocal sibilance. Both headphones seem to present vocal grain in a neutral fashion, not emphasizing it. On the other hand, the Peacock's vocals were generally clearer and stood out a little bit more from instruments. The Ether C seemed to push vocals back further, acting almost like they were muffled. The trouble is a bit differently presented between these headphones. While the Ether C and Peacock appear to emphasize upper trouble nearly the same, the overall experience was that the Ether C made the instrument sound recessed in comparison. The Peacock is noticeably clearer and provides greater separation of treble instruments. The Ether C does provide at least an average amount of detail. Obvious details are clearly there, same as with the Peacock. Indeed, the amount and type of details these headphones render is nearly identical, in my opinion. For my quantitative detail test, the Ether C rendered 7 clear footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. The Ether C flow has about as much soundstage as the HD6XX and the LCD1. The Peacock has wider soundstage. The Ether C flow 1.1 is sometimes labeled a detail oriented headphone. I did not hear that. Perhaps you can attribute this to the tuning pads in the headphone. Were I to remove them, we might have a rather different experience. But the idea with these tests is to use all of this gear in its stock form, without EQ and without additional modifications. Since my ethers were delivered with the tuning pads already inserted, that's what I chose to use in this comparison. The Ether C is not really neutral. It has a noticeable bass roll-off, it has a sharper treble emphasis than the Peacock, and it has an overall more muffled sound. This is neither good nor bad, merely an observation. A detail monster, a champion of placement and resolution, the Ether C Flow 1.1 is not. However, it does provide an intimate presentation without bass bloat or harshness. The Peacock, in contrast, is closer neutral and sounds clearer. The Ether 2 has less sub bass presence than the Peacock. Transients is a little faster on the Ether 2. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is more obvious on the Peacock. Clarity in the bass region is noticeably more present on the Peacock. Mid-bass impact is harder on the Peacock. The mids are close to neutral on the Peacock. This headphone only marginally accentuates vocal sibilance but keeps vocal grain fairly neutral. The Ether 2 seems to have a very similar rendition, but I suggest that the Ether 2 is actually more neutral compared to the Peacock in the mids region. However, the Ether 2 has less clarity and separation of mid-centric elements. The Peacock pushes vocals a little further ahead of instruments in comparison. The treble is marginally accentuated on the Peacock, which has a slight push in the upper treble region. The Ether 2 appears to be neutral in the treble area. On the other hand, the Ether 2 has less clarity and separation of instruments. It's easier to hear placement of instruments on the Peacock. The Ether 2, in comparison, makes everything sound shoulder to shoulder. Detail retrieval is neither headphone's forte. However, the Ether 2 tends to sound a little muffled. The Peacock is generally a little clearer overall and has greater separation of elements. Obvious details are present in both headphones, but the Peacock allows more of those details to be heard clearly. Multiple vocalists, shifting of a cello, sharp intake of breath, twangs of guitar strings, the stuff that was meant to be heard will usually be heard on both. It just varies how easily audible, depending on the headphone. For my quantitative detail test, the Ether 2 presented 7 footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. As I indicated previously, the Peacock simply rendered these footsteps more clearly. Regarding soundstage, the Ether 2 has marginally wider soundstage than the HD6XX or the LCD1. The Peacock's soundstage is wider than the Ether 2's. The overall sound signature of the Ether 2 is a little closer to neutral in some regards than the Peacock's. The Ether 2 has a greater sub-bass roll-off than the Peacock, but more neutral mids and treble. 
On the other hand, the Ether 2 is dark sounding. It sometimes muffles details and elements in a mix. It has average at best clarity and separation. But for the bass roll-off, I would say that the Ether 2 is neutral, though not a detail-oriented headphone. The Autour and Peacock seem to have just about the same amount of sub-bass presence. Transience is also very similar. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is slightly more obvious on the Autour. Bass clarity is marginally greater on the Autour. Mid-bass impact is very similar, with the Peacock having perhaps just a few decibels greater impact. The Peacock accentuates vocal sibilance very slightly. The Autour does not. However, in exchange, the Autour has a little bit of emphasis in vocal grain, which the Peacock does not. Clarity in the mids region is slightly greater on the Autour. Separation of mid-centric elements is very similar, but the Autour appears to have just a tiny bit more of it. The Peacock and Autour both accentuate treble. The Peacock has a slight elevation starting around the mid-treble region. The Autour has a slightly greater emphasis in the upper treble area. Separation and clarity among treble instruments is a bit more obvious on the Autour. Detail retrieval is very similar between these headphones. It was difficult to hear any differences in this regard. Both headphones present obvious details, but the Autour can render them just a little bit more clearly. I never felt, however, that the Autour provided placement or separation that the Peacock could not. For my quantitative test, the Autour presented 9 footsteps compared to the Peacock's 8. As for soundstage, both headphones have above average soundstage. Both have more than the HD6XX and LCD1. However, the Autour has just a tiny bit more soundstage than the Peacock. The Autour also tends to have a little bit more clarity overall. The Autour's overall sound signature leans towards neutral. Its bass response is similar to that of the Peacock's. However, the Autour accentuates vocal grain in upper treble more than the Peacock. The Autour has a little bit more clarity and separation. If the Peacock is a neutral-ish headphone, then the Autour is probably in that category as well. The headphone has slightly greater sub-bass presence than the Peacock. It is not a significant difference, but it is noticeable in an A-B test. Transience is about the same. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is more obvious on the Peacock. Clarity in the bass region is more obvious on the Peacock. Mid-bass impact is very similar between these headphones. The headphone has more neutral mids. It does not accentuate vocal grain or sibilance. The Peacock tends to have a slight emphasis in sibilance. Clarity in the mids region is more obvious on the Peacock. Separation of mid-centric elements is easier to hear on the Peacock. Both the headphone and Peacock have a treble emphasis. The Peacock starts around the upper treble region, and there is just a slight deviation above neutral. The headphone appears to be neutral in the low to mid treble, but has an emphasis in the upper treble. This accentuation is a little bit greater than that of the Peacock's. Clarity and separation of treble instruments is a little bit more obvious on the Peacock. The Peacock seems to present the same amount of details as the headphone. The headphone has a more intimate presentation with elements seeming closer to the ears. There's greater melding among all elements on the headphone, which results in less separation and clarity among instruments and vocals when compared to the Peacock. However, both headphones render obvious details, except that the Peacock usually renders the same details a little bit more clearly. In my quantitative test, both the headphone and the Peacock presented 8 footsteps. As for soundstage, the headphone appears to have soundstage that is comparable to that of the HD6XX and the LCD1. The Peacock has wider soundstage and more clarity overall. The headphone's overall sound signature appears to be neutral. It has more neutral bass and mids, but a bit more emphasis in upper treble when compared to the Peacock. The headphone presents slightly more obvious placement, where sounds tend to occur in all directions. The Peacock does present width and depth and only a little bit of verticality. The headphone on the other hand does not have the clarity and separation of the Peacock. Ultimately, I would say that both headphones are fairly neutral sounding. The Lyric's sub-bass rendition is similar to that of the Peacock. However, the Lyric has slightly greater emphasis in the bass overall and marginally longer decay. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass was very close, but I think that the Peacock has just a tiny bit more of it. Clarity was slightly more obvious on the Peacock. Mid-bass impact was harder on the Lyric. The mids are differently presented. The Peacock only slightly accentuates sibilance, but tends to keep vocal grain fairly neutral. The Lyric emphasizes vocal grain and sibilance. 
The sibling's push on the lyric is slightly greater than that of the peacock's. The peacock has a bit more clarity and separation in the mids region. Vocals are further apart from instruments on the peacock. The lyric tends to keep vocals about shoulder to shoulder with instruments. The treble is also different on these headphones. The peacock is fairly neutral until around the upper treble region, where there is a slight emphasis. The lyric, however, appears to have a slight roll off in the mid to upper treble area. The lyric's treble rendition is more, as some might call, relaxed. Separation of instruments and overall clarity is more obvious on the peacock. Detail retrieval on these headphones is not significantly different. Both provide obvious details and some subtle ones. Neither is particularly adept with nuanced details. However, the peacock more often than not provided clearer rendition of the same details that the lyric offered. Electric buzzing, creaking of wood, sharp intakes of breaths, multiple vocalists, twangs of guitar strings, the peacock and lyric each rendered these types of details but the peacock generally made them a little bit more easy to hear. In my quantitative test, the lyric rendered seven clear footsteps compared to the peacock's eight. As for soundstage, the lyrics is slightly wider than that of the HT6XX. The peacock soundstage, however, is wider than that of the lyric. Placement, clarity, and separation are generally more present on the peacock. The lyric's overall sound signature has a bass emphasis particularly compared to the peacock, that emphasis seems obvious in the mid bass region. There's also some bass bleed into the mids on the lyric. Going back and forth, the lyric presented vocals with more sibilance and grain, but less separation from instruments. The lyric's treble has a slight roll off compared to the peacock's marginal emphasis. The lyric is not a V shaped signature. I think it falls into the balanced sound category. The peacock leans in the neutral direction. People are going to disagree about these expensive headphones. If you spent $2,000 on the headphone, then you might become offended if someone tells you that the headphone's performance is not significantly different from a cheaper product. Or if you're a fan of a particular brand, hearing that the brand is not living up to its purported skills might be jarring. I'm not trying to insult or condemn anyone or anything. It doesn't matter to me one way or another. What does matter is whether these expensive headphones perform so differently from each other that we have lots of variety to choose from. The answer is twofold. First, no, these headphones do not vary wildly in performance. Second, yes, these headphones do vary noticeably from each other. I will explain both answers. When I talk about performance, I mean specific attributes like soundstage, detail retrieval, clarity, separation, and placement. Why these specific individual attributes and not dynamics? Because dynamics is a vague term. It's an easy out for not knowing how to explain what you're hearing. You can easily say that something is dynamic or not dynamic and convey little to no helpful information. Dynamics or dynamic range means the differences between the softest to the loudest part of a sound or note in a song. If a guitar player in a band is playing softly, then has to increase emphasis a few notes gradually, then you might hear that. Think of this specific example using a guitar. Let's say an acoustic song has two vocalists and two guitars. One of the guitarists starts lightly thumping the body of his guitar with his knuckles. These are light taps. When the vocalists start singing, those light taps might remain the same emphasis until there's a change in tempo, at which point that soft guitar thumping becomes louder. You might be able to hear the soft and loud portions of the guitar thumping. Would you be able to hear those differences in emphasis if the guitarist was by himself with no other instruments or vocalists? Yeah, I think it would be really difficult to miss it. Would you be able to hear these differences in emphasis if the guitarist was in a group of four instruments all playing together? Maybe. That would depend on what the other instruments are doing and how the recording was mixed. Would you be able to hear these differences in emphasis in a very complex arrangement involving multiple instruments and vocalists and digital filters applied during the recording process? Now that becomes difficult, I think. So dynamics or dynamic range is not a static concept. It is relative. It depends on the instrument, the emphasis, and the other elements in the song. It's not something that is independent. This is why I don't use the amorphous cop-out of dynamics to explain what I hear. It's all relative. 
This is why talking about specific attributes like soundstage, detail, separation, placement, and clarity are relevant. If your headphones have an intimate presentation with average at best soundstage, separation, and clarity, then it's unlikely your headphones will have greater audible dynamic range than another headphone that has wider soundstage, more clarity, and separation. And by the way, have you ever seen a headphone specification that lists dynamics? Odyssey, Meze, Fulcal, Sennheiser, Bear Dynamics, Sony, Hi-Fi Man, these companies don't have a dynamics or dynamic range listed as part of the specifications for their respective products. So how exactly are you supposed to quantify dynamics? Either you can vaguely say that a headphone has amazing dynamics, or the contrary, that is, that it has terrible dynamics. And by saying anything like this is unhelpful mumbo-jumbo. I'm beating a dead horse. The point I'm trying to drive home is that there is no such thing as dynamics in a vacuum. The ability to hear the quietest portions along with the loudest depends on a lot of competing factors. I think it's about time reviewers stop using the word dynamics as the boogeyman. So back to my original answer. No, these expensive headphones do not differ wildly in performance. There are indeed outliers, however. The HD800S and Focal Clear are materially different in performance. The 800S has the widest soundstage of any headphone I've heard. It has the greatest amount of detail retrieval, placement, and separation. The Focal Clear has detail and clarity that tends to rival that of the HD 800S, but its soundstage, placement, and separation are not equal to the 800S. But both of these headphones are vastly different in these regards than the other Uber Premium headphones. Indeed, the rest of the group tends to fall into a very similar performance category. Their detail, retrieval, clarity, separation, placement, and soundstage are similar. There are differences, of course, but nothing remotely as wild and magical as some would have you believe. Now, on to my second answer. Yes, there are differences among these headphones. And of course there are differences. All of these headphones have different sound signatures. They all have different ways of presenting your music. Sometimes the differences are minor, sometimes they are noticeable. Some headphones accentuate sibilance while others do not. Some have slightly greater bass, some have less clarity, some have narrower soundstage. That's all part and parcel of sound signature. So it's not that the LCD 4Z sounds like the Peacock. Rather, they may share some similarities in performance, but they retain their respective tonalities. When you delve into the Uber premium headphone market, you're dealing with a lot of hype, brand recognition, aesthetics, and egos. And that's before we even consider someone's particular sound preferences. All of the 15 headphones I compared here have their respective strengths and weaknesses. They all have different ways of presenting your music. None are trash or amazing. Only a few stand out in specific ways. If you're thinking about spending more than $1,000 on a headphone, the least I can say is that you are equally unlikely to stumble onto a trash headphone as you are to stumble onto the best headphone in the world. You may end up hating the sound signature of any or all of these headphones, but that's a personal matter. Just like it's a personal matter when you fall in love with the sound signature of any particular headphone, irrespective of its price. This is the end of part two of the Sandy Peacock review. In the next and final part, we'll talk about value and have a general discussion about everything we covered so far.